Hola, mis conijitos. ¿Cómo estás? Me llamo Alicia. Hello, my bunnies. How are you? My name is Allison, and we are playing Nancy Drew, Sea of Darkness, number 32, I believe. My gosh, are there really that many? <laughs> I believe in the previous video, we actually uh, came, got Soren distracted. He, we got him to leave his uh, post at the store, and we found a whole bunch of emails. And well, not a whole bunch of emails, and also a bunch of notes, which I took pictures of because I knew if I stayed there any longer, I, I could get I could get caught by Soren. So, uh, basically in this video, uh, I think I'm going to be reading these notes because not only are they informative, it looks like you can, it looks like you can read it, but I would like to read it myself as well. I mean, I could read it off, off recording, but then, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to read it to you all. <laughs> and I like to read. Reading is a lot of fun. It's very educational. That's actually the point of these Nancy Drew games, because you get to learn a whole bunch of stuff about different topics. This one being Iceland. So, to Pierre from Soren, I'd drain every money source I had, everything. Long lost foreign accounts, colonies, but those were surely drained already, given France had been short of bankrupt for years. Wait a minute, one of King Louis uh, the 16th predecessors, Louis the 15th, was one of France's wealthiest rulers. The Sun King, they called him. Sorry if I'm talking loud. Do you, do you think he might have had something stashed? A final war chest of sorts buried somewhere for emergencies alone? Perhaps that's what Ormiston discovered, hidden halfway around the world. And then sp suppose you're trying to move a fortune across the Atlantic and Pacific seas, across foreign waters, even perhaps American waters, without your enemies tearing you apart. You'd want to look as neutral as possible, a sheep wrapped in wolf's hide. Hum. Too sore from Pierre. The Dutch East India Company was the most prolific trading company in the world. Its ships were trusted everywhere, known in every port. A small, a smart ruler would strike a deal. A hasty payment under the table in exchange for a single company ship to carry a massive fortune round the world. What did you say your local ship's name was again? The Herlikide? The reason it never arrived in Paris, of course, is still unsolved, but I have no insight on that matter. To Pierre from Soren, Dr. Hardin, the implications of this are staggering. History is truly amazing. That money never made it to France, and Dormison was forced to propose an unpopular tax code to raise funding. The tax code led to public unrest, which led to the storming of the Bastille, the French Revolution. King Louis the Sixteenth, Marie Antoinette, thousands lost their heads in that madness. All because of the gold. One ship goes missing, and a country tears itself apart. I can't believe it. Oy. The day the Herlikide sank, Frank sank too. Or France sank too. <laughs> Only one question remains. What was it doing in Iceland? Huh. Yesterday I received final notice from Professor Wickenham. The faculty has opted not to pursue your proposal of the new for the Newfoundland project. I never thought a single sentence could cut me so deeply. I went to my former advisor and told him I'd pe petition it, send an updated proposal, anything. But he just laid a hand on my shoulder. In the end, it, com it comes down to funding, he told me. It always does in our world, doesn't it? The budget just won't stretch, especially not for a proposal of this size. I couldn't believe it. To let archaeology questions of this magnitude simply lie unanswered, I felt ill. I still strongly believe in the project's potential. I know there's something still hidden in the Americas, something amazing. Certain sagas reference landing po points on the continent. Wickenham and I, we all but proved it, for goodness sake. Just put a couple of pickaxes in our hands and let us work. But again, it all comes down to funding. Money, prestige, not knowledge. That's all that matters to these people. I packed my things this morning and told my landlord I was leaving. Even going home to Skiprot is better than staying in the States right now. Just setting foot on campus fills me with deep, 
anger. They've all but given up. Me? I don't give up. Ad astra per aspera. To the stars, even through hardship. And if it's money they need, well, I'll find a way to make it happen. Au revoir, Harvard. You haven't seen the last of me. I should go into the theater. I've arrived. Nothing has changed in the years I've been gone. It's peculiar, and in some ways it's as though I have come back not as a grown man, but as the boy I used to be. I've set up my tools and my various processes. I believe there may be some artifacts of interest in the nearby hills. It's a good thing I decided to go the opposite direction instead of this way. Tonight I went to the Misty Skip for the first time since my arrival. When I walked in, everyone fell silent and turned to watch me. I had a strange feeling they had all been talking about me, and not in a nice way. I've taken up my old job at the Culture Center for now, but even then, no one comes to speak to me. Aww, that's sad. No one returns my hellos when I'm in town. Only Elizabeth ever smiles and offers me a drink when I go to the skip. It reminds me of the old Argur of the sagas, accursed men, weak men. It doesn't matter. I'm not here for the company. Found a beautiful new axe today in the caverns. That made me feel a bit better. Five, year, five gears crank the wall of empty wood. Behold the curls on the proud lion's mane, facing upwards towards the sky. Found this etched on the hull before it was painted over. Why skywards? Does it refer to the lion on the ship's bow? Perhaps. It's getting harder and harder to work with Elizabeth. I took this job because I thought it'd be an easy way to make some friends. Ha! The first month I asked for invoices and got a blank stare. Turns out Elizabeth only keeps financial records for the pub. What of expenses and credits for the festival, I asked. Surprise, surprise. The answer to that was no clue. Upon further inspection, I discovered the accounts were deeply in the red to the tune of 2.5 million kroner. The festivals have been hemorrhaging money for the last two years running. Coincidentally, ever since Magnus's sanity took a dive over the nearest waterfall. Is it equally coincidental that the two are dating? I think not. Needless to say, I had to take Elisabeth off finances completely. Whoa. My workload has doubled. I rarely leave the headquarters now. I feel positively horrible about demoting Elizabeth, but she's not in the right mindset to be handling that amount of kroner right now. All of her focus is on the ship and on Magnus. It angers me that he absorbs so much of her time. Uh, it's clear the town utterly depends on her, and, her, and here she is fawning over that, that dolt. I, but it can't be helped. I'll have to work around it. I'll manage. I always do. January. Tourist bus. 21 visitors. Festival at traffic. 391, 391 visitors. One non-associated associated visitor. Nancy Drew. December. School tour. Rake from Yekivik. 30 visitors. November. One visitor. Alicia DeSoto. In town to visit Dagny. Or Alicia. It's always pronounced different. Purchased a gift for her. Gift shop sales quota for the month achieved. October. One visitor. Sunny June! Hired for seasonal temp work. Fired within five days. <laughs> he asked for two weeks notice and continued working. <laughs> Necessitated. <laughs> That's Sunny, of course. Necessitated an, ex an explanation that two weeks notice is only valid if you're leaving, not being fired. Found one Viking-themed teddy bear missing from the pair shelf after his final day. Reported to authorities. Authorities seemed seemed disturbingly unconcerned about bear theft. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Sunny. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Moira's note. I took a little trip to London on the recent rainy weekend and found this book. I thought you might enjoy it. I know, of course, that you love to read about adventures almost as much as you love to go on them. I'm so very sorry to hear about the troubles you've been through lately. There are times when we all fall prey in mo on monsters of our own. 
Remember that in the end, life is won not by crawling into a hole and hiding away, but by opening our hearts and raising our swords. You will stand in the sun again, my dear. I hope this little book brings you the big courage you need in the winter months ahead. Aww. It's so sweet. What happened here? It looks like there's been a, a struggle. Uh-oh. That's Dagny's phone. But where's Dagny? Easy enough. Let's see. Easy enough? What the heck are you talking about? Alright. I actually have no clue. Wait, could it be that note? Um... Scuttlebutt. I don't know why I was having trouble there. I'm dumb. Pictures of a blank wall. Either Dagny's losing it or this is a clue. Huh. Interesting. Oh, what? Seriously, the phone is left there? Guild Bank. This is an automatic account tax. Please confirm your bank deposit. What the heck? For Gulf Coast Treasure Find. Deposit? This is an automatic account tax. Please confirm your bank deposit. With a tasked message from Mr. Fallon for Santa Fe investigation results. Uh, automatic deposit. Dang! From Louv from for Petra extra extraction. Dang, girl, you earn a lot of money. Why the heck are you doing this treasure treasure search? Uh, Soren. Very excited for the maiden voyage. The deck looks darling. I put you into our festival donor section as Mrs. Dagny Silva de Soto. Just Dagny Silva now, thanks. Turns out my life partner wasn't so lifey after all. Elisa's returned to the States. Alicia. I had no idea. Terribly, terribly sorry to hear that. Condolences. Plenty of fish in the sea. Single and ready to mingle. No time like the present. You're an absolute gem, etc. It's fine. I'll survive. I always do. Just leave me alone. Magnus. What? So Magnus knew he was being followed. I need to get a closer look at that bed frame. What bed frame? Something is following me. I lock lock everything down. Okay, Mr. Melodramatic. Are we starting in are we starting to to get just a little paranoid? What about the dock pylon? Are you dropping that? I'm serious, you'll have to wait on the final piece we discuss. What? Where are you putting it? Bed frame on the ship, magic circles, Venn diagrams, the key is the overlapping sections. There are five pieces, you have one. I have one. Where are the remaining three? How could they have gotten so lost? You're not making sense. Calm down, have a bath, eat some fermented whatever you people eat. I'll eat I'll see you in the morning. Gosh dang it, I wanna observe this. And it looks like I can't. Oh, but These I can footprints. They're huge. Only one guy in town has feet this size. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna go on the ship first. Cause seriously, that bed frame. What? What was he talking about? Is it if this, this bed? If this is the original captain's bed, then I should take a closer look. They're Venn Ooh, diagrams. This... I need to place the numbers inside the circle so that they add up to the totals within the overlapping sections. Wait, what? Place the numbers so that any total shown in the overlapping sections is the sum of those circles' individual numbers. Okay, so. Uh, seven. 
I guess this would be four, this would be three. Yes, because that means this would be two. Okay. Excuse me. So four plus two is um, six. Uh, Thirteen. Uh oh. Six. I don't know. Oh, right. I can do the ones over here. Uh, ten. I can't do five because then I would have to have another five over there. So, let's see. I guess nine and one. Or would it be this? I guess it would have to be this because uh, nine plus this circle would have to equal 23. So, ten. Ten minus twenty-three is thirteen. There we go. Nope, I messed up somewhere. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> 